Today, we're talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Superheroes, aliens, magic stones, and a talking raccoon with a gun and unresolved emotional issues. And I'm gonna argue completely seriously that the MCU makes more sense than the Flat Earth Theory. Hello all, welcome along to another video with me, Simon Dan. Thanks very much for joining me and Happy New Year. New Year, quick thank you. We have just passed 200 founding members for the Simon Dan Book Club, which is honestly wild. What started as a simple idea, slow down, read properly, think a bit deeper, has turned into a genuinely brilliant little community. The idea is a curated science book every two months delivered to your front door with other goodies in the box with it and online goodies too. Then you get two months to read it, discuss and understand as a community. Could not think of a better way to spend 2026 to be honest. If you're watching this and you're already in, thank you so much for backing it early. If you're not, then this is the year of fewer hot takes and actual learning. Details are at simandanbookclub.com. The link is in the description. Please do check it out and then join, of course, if you're interested and you can become a founding member too. Thanks again. Right then, on with today's video where I'm going to argue that the Marvel Cinematic Universe makes more sense than the Flat Earth Theory. Not because the MCU is real, obviously not, but because it follows rules, updates those rules responsibly, and doesn't collapse the moment you ask two questions in a row. Flat Earth can't manage that. This video isn't about whether you like Marvel or not. It's about internal consistency. And I've said this before, we've done a few videos like this in the past. Minecraft, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars. And it's the absolute minimum requirement for any idea that claims to describe reality. If a fictional universe about gods and portals can do that, then there really is no excuse. And we start with this. The MCU has rules, Flat Earth doesn't. One of the most important things about the MCU, and it does it well, is it establishes rules. They're weird rules sometimes, sure, but they're clear. Infinity stones have specific functions. Magic has limits. Technology requires energy, resources, time. When something extraordinary happens, it's extraordinary within a framework. Flat Earth doesn't have a framework. It has situational explanations. Gravity doesn't exist until something falls. Then it's density until density fails. Then buoyancy until someone asks buoyancy in what? Then suddenly it's electrostatics or a fraction or God. That's not layered understanding, it's just recycling excuses. Marvel would never allow a scene where Iron Man flies with jets in one scene, then with density, then with electromagnetism in another. Rules matter because they let you predict outcomes. Flat Earth never predicts anything, it only reacts. Right, next then we're going to talk about retcons versus moving the goalposts. Now let's be fair, Marvel does retcon stuff. But here's the crucial difference. Marvel admits that. They say, okay, that didn't quite work, here's how we're going to fix that. Flat Earthers will never admit change. Antarctica used to be the edge of the world, an impossible wall guarded by the militaries of Earth. Now people go there regularly, so the story's changed. But Flat Earth pretends that it didn't. And it's the same with the sun. It was small and local, and then people measured the angle. Then suddenly all the measurements were wrong and refraction did a lot of the work. Then refraction only worked when it was useful for them. That is, of course, not development, but denial. In the MCU, when they retcon something, they often develop it into the story. Flat Earthers just upload a new video and hope you forget the one before that. Okay then, let's move on to the next section, and for this one I want to talk about scale, because scale matters. The MCU understands something that Flat Earth does not. Scale matters. Distances matter. Sizes matter. Energy requirements matter. You don't casually shrink the universe because the argument gets awkward. In Flat Earth, the sun is close, but it lights up half the Earth. The moon is near, but everyone sees the same face. Stars are local, but never show parallax. In the MCU, if you mess with scale, then things break. Too much energy, catastrophe. Too small, quantum realm. Too fast, time dilation. Flat Earth treats scale like a suggestion. That's not a physical model, that's storytelling without the maths. Which brings me nicely onto technology, which works really well in the MCU. 
This is where it gets genuinely embarrassing. The MCU invents technologies, but they still respect cause and effect. Iron Man needs power, spaceships need thrust. The communication in the films has limits. Flat Earth, meanwhile, relies on technology created by Globe Earth physics, whilst also claiming that these foundations are fake. GPS works, of course, but apparently satellites don't exist. Planes fly, but the maps are wrong. Time zones function, but Earth doesn't rotate. That's like saying, I don't believe in the internal combustion engine, but my car works fine. Yes, I know electric cars exist. Marvel would never write that sort of contradiction. They don't get to use the outputs of a system whilst denying the system itself exists. That is about as far from scepticism as you can get. Right then, next up we've got characters. And characters can, of course, be wrong in the MCU. This is one of the most realistic things about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's that characters are allowed to be wrong. Scientists disagree. Experts make mistakes. Villains genuinely think they're right when they aren't. But the Flat Earth leadership, they're never wrong, are they? If an experiment fails, it was sabotaged. If a prediction fails, it was misunderstood. And if evidence contradicts them, then of course it's fake. A belief system that cannot accept error is not strong. It's very brittle, actually. The Marvel Universe understands another thing that Flat Earth does not. Being wrong is how knowledge grows. Talking of knowledge, how about the fact that the MCU evolves with new information? As the MCU expands, it gets more complex, but not incoherent. New realms are introduced, rules are clarified, and of course, all the connections are explained. Flat Earth started simple, but now it requires a global conspiracy, fake space agencies, fake pilots, fake engineers, fake GPS, fake astronomy, fake physics, fake photos, and fake live feeds from space. At some point, the explanation becomes more complicated than the thing it's trying to replace. Marvel knows where to stop on this front. Flat Earth does not. I guess what you all really want to know, though, is why this matters. This is not about Marvel. It's about standards. If a fictional universe with gods and aliens and magic stones and talking animals can define rules, respect evidence, admit mistakes, and at the same time remain internally consistent, then a claim about the shape of the Earth should be able to manage the same. Flat Earth doesn't fail because people mock it, or because people like me prove it wrong. It fails because it refuses to operate like a model, and reality doesn't care about how confident you sound. So yes, a universe with time travel, infinity stones, and a big purple warlord makes more sense than the Flat Earth theory, because it knows what it is, fiction, and it respects its audience enough to be honest. And that, I'm afraid to say, is that for another video. Let's wrap this one up. Please do let me know in the comments below what you thought of this one and whether or not you'd like me to compare other things to the Flat Earth Theory as well, as I say we're all done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching today as ever. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the thumbs up button too. Just enough time to remind you about the Simon Dan Book Club. Remember, go to simandanbookclub.com to check it out uh, and join today if you're interested and you can become a founding member. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for the return of the great one. It's CC. Chris from New York, Westchester County. We're starting 2026 strong. See you then.